what I did, I click on new and then I added a new line. It was my choice to choose any of the data source types. The price transpose and cube is indeed the name of the query that has been created already in Dynamics X. And if I wanted to add a new one, I can pick and choose the module of my choice by clicking new and then pick and choose from the service query reference or custom and pick and choose a proper data source name. Happens that I'm focusing on the query reference in this specific lecture. So I pick and choose the query reference and indeed one of the options would be project table that we are focusing on. Of course, I've already done so, so I'm not going to activate that. But all you need to do is select it, choose the data source type and activate it. And that becomes enabled. And as part of my previous lecture, I showed you how you can test it by connecting to Excel and opening it up. Now in this scenario, I do that again. I open up a brand new Excel workbook. However, in order to speed up the demonstration, I've already prepared some other workbook. And for each stage, I'm actually pointing to it. But how do I connect instead of going to Dynamics AX, Office add-ins, if you see there's a Microsoft Dynamics AX Office add-ins as part of an installation of Dynamics AX has extended this particular utility for me that we can connect directly to AX, either get the data from AX, change the data, push it back into AX and change it. I've already shown you that. I rather directly now focus on the Power Query because that's the course is all about. So I highlight and click on a Power Query tab on the action pane on the ribbon. And as you see right here, we have lots of capabilities in order to get the data properly coming out of Dynamics X. And one of the buttons that I can click on is from other sources. And by selecting that specific table that comes from the query of Dynamics X, all I need to do now is select the from O data feed. This specific utility allows me to automatically search for that specific web service URL that is available. So as I mentioned, this is literally a case sensitive utility which we have already copied it here remember in this specific vm the name of the server it says ax2012 r2a but please don't get confused we are focusing on dynamics x2012 r3 cu8 even though the server name is ax2012 r2a the first piece after http colon forward slash forward slash is a server name and then of course there's a port and dynamics x services o data query service is available remember these are case sensitive and it's important to keep it as case sensitive otherwise your refresh wouldn't work this piece is important Dynamics X services, and then you have the port and you have the server name. I copy that and paste it into the URL in order to be able to read the O data feed. And by clicking OK, automatically, based on additional information, you see that it will expose all the tables that have been already introduced into the system on your right hand side. So if I point at any of these specific tables, the preview automatically loads the data. And that's a magnificent capability here that shows exactly what type of an information are available within my system before I even add it. I can select all of the items or I can select multiple items by selecting that checkbox. In this scenario, I'm interested in a couple of tables such as the project transposing cube and work details. I select those and then when I click load, it actually load the data coming from all data services into the table within Excel. And that takes probably some time depending on the size of the table behind the scene. Since rather this specific demo data has large amount of data, I don't necessarily waste the time. I switch back to a Excel that I've already completed those. As you see, I have 560 rows from the worker details and about 11,000 rows from Project Trans Posting Cube. I didn't want to waste the time for you to wait and see. So I've already done that in a different Excel and I actually call it workbook with raw query. So that's a workbook query. So what happens, the first stage, you introduce the table of your choice by using the query or service or custom query into the document sources. And then you come to the Microsoft Excel and choose a power query and connect to it by selecting from other sources and choose all data services. Then you put the link in and it will open up all available tables on your right hand side. Pick and choose the proper tables of your choice and load the data. That creates a workbook query for you. After that, you can select this specific table, which I'm interested in. And by clicking on it, the balloon pops up and that's nicely shows exactly available columns that are there. It says that where did you get the data from? As you see at the bottom of this, it shows the data sources, which is the query link. 
and then of course it shows that at what time has been refreshed obviously it's monday and then these are the columns and obviously the data transactions that have been brought over the latest date that has got the data it shows at least one sample row for you as part of my demo data has the data since 2012 so it shows the first row in there needless to say i have like over a few hundred columns here which i'm going to do clean up for you now after this after you do the preview you can actually right click at it and edit it and the query editor brings up a new dialog box and as you see this is specific utility gives you the capability lots of flexibility here to massage and change the data the way you want and for every single column here you can actually change it you can rename it you can do lots of stuff here you can also select the choose columns button at the top of the action ribbon and pick and choose the column of your choice as you see all of these columns have been selected by default you can only pick and choose the column of your choice to select or select the one that you like or just literally do the query and search for a series of different columns of your choice right there and then you can also pick and choose the specific formatting for a particular choice of yours such as this column the first one as you see it consists of a date which is a long date format you can separate the date and time you can add custom fields such as year or month or day or quarter and that automatically adds adequate value again i'm not going to spend much time in order to massage the data that spends a few hours really preparing this i switch to a workbook query that I've already created it and I'd like to show you how that will work. As you see I've already filtered from 11,000 now I'm down to 6,780 or something and I'm only interested in these fields and I even took the liberty and I renamed many of these fields. You see like project space ID, transaction space date, transaction space type. I have spent lots of time in order to create this cleaned specific data query rather than you waiting for me to clean things up. I've already done so. And I did that because I wanted to make sure that you have lots of data in it because having more data is more important for me to clean up the data. So you get the picture. You can get rid of the fields that you don't want, rename the fields that you like. That is just time consuming, but the important piece is you have to have proper data in order to be able to analyze the data properly. So this is a query editor built in within Excel. Now up to here, as you notice, I didn't really need Office 365. So you have seen it as part of a Power Query, which was the first piece of my demonstration. Power Query was an add-in available for Excel similar to Excel data tab, but you could do a lot more. It does support a lot more data sources from SQL, Azure data sources, Facebook for your purposes, perhaps, or OData as you saw. And it is a tool used to query all data sources from Dynamics X into Power Query data model. Let me actually switch back here once more. If you click on a file and click on the option, if you don't have those add-ins, you can add them. So the Power Query is an add-in, is a common add-in, which is free. You can download and literally that will be added into the system. And I just wanted to remind you that, that you can grab data from so many different data sources out there, but the Power Query is similar to that, but is giving lots of capabilities such as SAP, Facebook, Exchange, Active Directory, even a blank query that you can create and lots of other capabilities and specifically for our purposes connecting to Dynamics X using OData feed or OData services. Just wanted to show you that that should be enabled and you have already seen the demo. So the tips for Power Query, first you start with the right query, then the URL remember is case sensitive for data refresh. The URL in the query needs to match the query service that you have already created it in data management sources. You have to keep the security in mind. Are you exposing sensitive data to the wrong parts of your organization? You have to really be cautious about that. Even though the first piece of it, grabbing the data from Dynamics X, it checks your authentication, but when you put it in Excel, then depends on how you secure the Excel itself is something to consider. Keep the cautious in there because you may deal with sensitive data. Transform your data to make it easy for people to understand. How did I do that? By getting rid of fields that didn't make any sense for my business intelligence and renaming fields that weren't making sense for the field name. So I renamed those. And then save common queries to your data catalog for Office 365, which I'll show you later. So you can keep reusing and build on top of your knowledge. Then after I extracted and transformed the data, it's time to create visualization. Dynamics X and Power BI and visualization would be the next topic.